Saudamos a todos com a paz do Senhor Jesus. Amém. Em reverência à palavra do Senhor, vamos colocar de pé nesse instante. Êxodo. Velho Testamento. Capítulo 21. Leremos alguns versículos. Êxodo. Capítulo 21. A partir do verso 1. Amém? Diz assim a palavra do nosso Deus. Now these are the judgments which you shall set before them. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he shall serve six years, and in the seventh he shall go out free and pay nothing. If he comes and by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he comes in married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master has given him a wife and she has born him sons and daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. But if the servant plainly says, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him to the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or to the doorpost. And his master shall pierce his ear with a gnaw, and he shall serve him forever. We bless you, God. por mais instância de comunhão pela libertação, pelo precioso sangue de Jesus, e pedimos que na Tua Palavra, mais uma vez, Tu vens, ó Deus, abençoar o Teu povo, a Tua igreja. Oramos no nome santo do Senhor Jesus. Amém? Os irmãos, podem se assentar. Nós cantamos um louvor que, quando andava no mundo escravizado, e numa parte do louvor diz assim, um alto preço, um alto preço pago. E ele fala sobre um alto preço, The last song talks about the, the happiness, the, the real happiness is to have Christ on our sides. If we put them together, one talks about the price being paid and the happiness. So it talks about the price of the happiness. The happiness has a price. It's rare. It's high price. It's of a high price and it's difficult to find. It's rare. Is that right? I am happy because the Bible says I'll go to heaven, my beautiful country. This is real happiness. So Jesus, at the Sermon of the Mountain, he talks about the Beatitudes, all the blessings. So happiness and the, the blessings are the same. So when you're blessed, you're happy, very happy. So here is talking about the, the result, the happiness that is a result of the salvation. And is in a statute. It's a law. And this law was established by God. God never forced anybody to make this decision. But it's a choice. And when you offer a chance, an option, You can say yes or no to the proposal. Like a marriage, 
a man can make a proposal and the wife has a choice to say yes or no. After she, <laughs> after she say yes, the freedom is gone. <laughs> because now both turn themselves in one, in one accord. So this month we are praying and talking about the families. We just finished the, the, the week of fasting in favor of our households. And this text talks about this question, this subject. Talks about family, the, f the husband, the wife, and the children. Because family, we know it's part of God's project for the mankind. God has created Adam, and he said, domain upon the animals. And all the animals has the, the male and the female. And God says, it's not good that the man stay by himself. Let's make him an, a helper. So she came to add to his life. So then God made a proposal. And this is registered in the Word of God. After the Ten Commandments being delivered to Moses. And commandment is an order. And it's something necessary to obey. And the proposal is, if someone buys a slave, a slave, like a Hebrew, if he buys a, a, a slave, he's supposed to work for him for six years. And we know that in the Bible, the number six symbolic talks about the the human the reasonable side of the the mankind so he if he bought it he spent he spent that money so it belongs to him right if you buy a, a car the car belongs to you because you have paid the price and here is the situation of the man someone buys a worker a slave and when, when it talks about the, the Hebrew, it's related to the people, people of God. The ones that were called by the Lord. And the Bible says that this, this man, this slave, he had to serve in that house for six years. Once again, talks about a period of time. <coughs> A period that he was committed to be with his master and to obey all the orders. So whatever the, the master says, go, he goes. Whatever the master says, do, he does. He did. So it was an obligation. When you work, for commitment or for gratitude, with joy. You, you, you enjoy what you're doing because you like, you enjoy, or you like the person that you work for. And here talks about that after six years, he will be set free. After this period of seven years, and though we know that the number seven talks about the, the perfection of God's plans for, for the humanity. For example, the, the rainbow has seven colors. The week has seven days. When you, you check the Bible, seven lamps in the book of Revelation, the Spirit has lit the seven lamps. So the number seven is related to the perfection of God. The seven churches, the seven angels, seven trumpets, seven days of the week. God created the earth in seven days and the seventh day he rested 
And in the seventh year, the slave will be free to go. He can pack his luggages and he will be free to go according to the law of the Old Testament. But if this man, if he arrived seven years before, if he was bought by himself, he, he has to leave by himself. I arrived by myself, I'm leaving by myself. If I arrived with my wife at the end of the seven years, I'll leave with my wife. If I arrived with my wife and kids, at the end I can leave. He could leave with his wife and children. But if he arrived by himself, if his master provided a wife, and during this period his wife had given him children, at the end of this period the wife and the children belong to the master, even though he was married. So the law was that the servant belonged to the master. The, the wife, it was a servant, and the children that belonged to the master. So they didn't belong to him. So the, the children that was given during the period belongs to the master. So at the end of this period, if the slave shows the desire not to leave, and now we're going to discuss the reasoning for him to decide to stay, he could give up on this freedom and he can continue to be servant or slave in this household. He needs to do something publicly, officially. He has to declare that he didn't want to leave because he loved the master, he loved the wife and the children and everything else that came within this period. So he has to present that reason if he wants to stay in that house, the house of the master. And if that was so, the Bible says that he was taken before the judge because he was something officially, like a notary, notarization. It's like in our days, it's the same as going to the court. It needs to be certified. That decision needs to be official. And he was taken to the gate. And by the door, the doorpost, he will be perforated on his ears. And it was pierced. And that marked was be something that belongs to the, the part of his body or a piece of wood that was by the door. So the same, the same place was like a mark in the man and in the doorpost. That will be forever there as a, a remarkable official demonstration of the decision. So what, what God wants to show God wants to show us that the mankind, our souls, was bought not for something with a low value, but with a high price. When we look at Jesus, the price that Jesus paid at the cross, it was related to the price of a slave, 30 coins of silver. So Jesus, he bought us with his life shed on the cross, every and each one of us. And the word of God assures us that when was bought, our soul was redeemed. From that point on, we belong to him now. It talks about a people that belongs to the Lord, the Master, a merciful Master. David, for example, he used to say, the Lord is my shepherd. 
He knows that he belongs to a master. The master of David was the God Almighty. And he describes all the features of this shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Guide me through a verdant pastures. Guide me to the quiet waters. Refreshes my soul. A God that if even though if I walk through the valley of death, I shall not fear. Because you will, you will be with me. The rod and the staff comforts me. God will allow me to dwell in his house for long periods. Talks about eternity. So David was talking about this God, this master. And this is the Lord that we are discussing tonight. This is the God that we are presenting. A God that bought us with a high price and has called to his presence. And many, when arrived, came by himself. Many came alone. And the word of God says, like I mentioned at the beginning, it's not good that the man can be in solitude. So you came by yourself, but here the Lord provides you a wife. For example, the master provided children. Talks about also the church. Which means when you, arrive, you and I arrived, we found a family, a spiritual family. If, if you came by itself, by himself, by himself he'll go. Interesting that God always gives us a freedom to come and go. The salvation is like that. We'll come and we'll go, it will find pastures. After a certain period, the man is not obliged. There is a text in the Bible that says, if someone invites you to walk a mile, go with him too. Because the first one is like an obligation. If someone come and force you to walk with him one mile. So go too. So the first one is by obligation and the second one you go for your desire. So God don't, doesn't want us to serve him by force, by violence. And as the period of six years, you are serving God because you don't know the real reason. And you're feeling like you are obliged. But when you reach, when you understand the project of God, and when you understand that the master the God when he unveiled the plan for your life now you're going to serve him by gratitude by love many here are married imagine if your wife was with you for obligation or if I was with her by obligation. Imagine what kind of relationship was that. And this is not the ideal of the relationship that God has planned. God once says, I'll not call you servants anymore, but I'll call you friends. Because what God wants for man is a relationship of friendship. The Bible says, God has loved the world so much that he gave his only son by love. Give me my son your heart. So here the, the, the Bible talks about the freedom. So starting today you can say, I'm going to pack my luggage and I'll go, I'll go free. I'm not going to be part of the lands or the kingdom. And he could go. 
God does not force anybody. But if this servant expressly says, I love my master, and when you take the Psalm 40, written by David as well, the expression is the same. It says, 116, oh, forgive me, Psalm 116, I love you, Lord, because he heard my voice and my supplication. Because he had inclined his ears to me. And then he keeps saying, I love you, Lord, as for you have delivered my soul from death and my eyes from tears and my feet from the struggles. And there is a, a passage that we all know. What can, we, can I give? Why should I, why shall I give to the Lord for all the benefits? What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? The expression is, I want to stay for love, for all the blessings and benefits that he has done for my life. In the Psalm 40, David says something else. He says, The Lord patiently inclined to me and heard my cry. He has brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon the rock and established my steps. He talks about the things that God has done for him from where he has brought and where he has put it from the clay like a miry clay to the rock. Imagine. So he was expressing the blessing to be taken from a horrible place to the rock. So he has the, the conscience that God is powerful enough to provide this deliverance. So now he starts to serve God by gratitude for all the blessings that God has provided. So he says, God has put a new song in my lips, a new song. Many, O oh Lord, are the wonders that you have made in my favor. There is a passage that says, I wish I could declare, I could express the wonders of the Lord. So when the man recognize what God has done, price for his soul, brethren, do you know the value for your soul? The price for your soul, the price that was paid for your life, how much does it worth? How much your life worth? The great price that was paid for your life, for your soul. If you, if you think it doesn't worth anything, that's, that's the price of salvation 
for your perception. But if you think your life is valuable, there is a song that says, I want you to value what you have. You are a being, you are someone important for God. So for God, you have value. That's why he paid the high price for your life. David recognizes that very well. David, his ears were like pierced, as we mentioned in the text. God has pierced my ears. God has made a covenant with me, with my house. In my house, says the Lord, never will be in lack of a man to reign upon the kingdom, my kingdom. So in the text that we read, the, the wife and the children that was provided during the period that the slave was there, was staying in the master's house because these are blessings that belong to the Lord. So the word says, if this man, if this slave declares, I love my Lord, I love my master, it should, should be like an official declaration, a document. Bible says, if you confess me before the man, I'll confess you before my son, my father. I love my master. I love my wife, my children. I don't want to be far from them. So the man will take him by the judges. Why the expression door? Why not? a wall, why not something like that? Because the door talks about the access. The door is Jesus. I am the door. Whoever comes through me will find pastures. The freedom. In the book of Revelation, John says, and after everything, I saw a door open in heaven. The door talks about the gate, the passage that gives us access to eternity. So we will only enter in heaven to live forever. The ones that accepted Jesus as a savior, not by obligation, not by force. If it was by obligation, this sign will not be at the door. But if it's for love, the, the sign, the pierce, will cause a mark in the body and in, at the door. Because it talks about the love. I bring, Apostle Paul says, I bring in my body the marks of our Savior Jesus. So if you notice, whatever the Apostle Paul's done for God, it expresses the gratitude that God took him from the darkness to his presence to reach the door, the passage. So if you are outside, you see inside. It's the connection. So the person can identify so you never open the door if you're not sure who's there. If it's a good person or a bad person. So this identification process is to be accepted, to be authorized to go through. That identification Remember the parable of the ten virgins, five prudence and five full. The, the, the shout was given and whoever has the identification came and entered to the, to the festivities. So the, the connection is love. Remember, even though if I speak tongues, 
If I don't have love, I'll be like a broken bell. So the, the, the love never fails. This love, this connection, the, uh, it must exist between the servant and the master. This connection, this piercing mark at the ear, the faith come by hearing, hearing the word of God. So the master will perforate the ear of the servant and nobody will do that but the master. The master will do that, will perforate the ear and we are doing, we are marked by our, our Lord, our master, by the Holy Spirit. It's the, the mark of the blood has provided us fellowship as the song that the children have sang. So we need to have this mark this sign so the instrument that will do the perforation is the desire God has for us to be used in his work of the Holy Spirit so uh, rephrasing Paul I have fought the good fight and I kept the faith so he was faithful to death because he loved his master. He has gratitude for all the blessings that God has provided to him until then. This is the desire of the Lord, that we can serve him not by obligation, nor by force, but by love and gratitude. Serve him knowing that he has done many things, many wonders for our lives. Whoever works for a bad boss, he, he doesn't stay. He'll quit, right? But if the, the, the boss is good, David mentioned that his master, his shepherd, prepares a table before him in the presence of his enemies. So we serve a God that is provider. David understand that he's supposed to serve the Lord, not God serve himself. Jesus gave us the greatest example. He washed the feet of the disciples, showing the example of a real servant. So David declared that God, as a shepherd, prepared him a table before his enemies. That's why he desired and he put in, in his heart the desire to serve the Lord. Not to be here by force, by obligation, but for love and gratitude for all the benefits that he has done for us. Amen? The Lord has shown a man that during his life he has abundance materially but he was not happy. He felt slave by the materialistic things. And recently, he surrendered his life to Christ. He decided to serve the Lord. And the so-called friends and family criticized him saying, oh, now you are a slave of a gospel. And he then showed the sign on his ears. He had a mark, like the mark of the message. It talks about an identification that he belongs to the Lord. And to sh when he showed that sign, the happiness expressed in his face was a characteristic of someone that know the real freedom which is the the result of the salvation it's good to have money yes it might be but jesus says he is the owner of the gold and the silver and he, god recommends us not to build treasures in this world but in heaven where the the taff 
or anything else will steal it or take away. So seek first the kingdom of God. Because like David says, I never see a righteous begging or his descendants also in poverty. I'll tell you an experience tonight. When I came to the presence of the Lord, we used to have four companies. A pizza place, a bike place, uh, like a convenience store. And like an internet land house. Amen. I was, I thought I was well succeed, man. And I have an experience with the Lord at the end of February. When it was June, I broke to the ground zero. All the four companies gone. I have to sell all my cars to pay the bills. I have to sell the the air conditioning, the phones, the the the, the line phones. I, I I have to go living in rent, and for four months I didn't pay my rent. I was in bad shape. So all the friends, so-called friends, says, look what you have done. I don't know what you have done, but you must have done something bad. Leave this church. Look what happened to you. You were like doing well. Now you are in this situation. You are like collecting cans to survive. So I start to work for somebody and after 70 days without getting paid. I, I got a loan and I made my groceries for 30 days. After 30 days, I don't have how to cover the check. I made another loan for 60 days. And it was the best period of my life. The best thing of my life. When I decided to serve the Lord. There is a text in the Bible that says, Abraham, before he, he go to war, he has the right to you to to make use of this poem. So sometimes God determined that the king could not use the spoil to not show dependence of whoever he conquered. Sometimes people think if you're going to, to the church, you're going to be rich. Yes, you're going to be rich of the grace of God. You're going to acquire a treasure where the, the insects will not destroy it, the rust will not destroy it, and the theft will not steal it. But God is merciful. Remember Job? He was in a very difficult moment. He lost everything, even the health. And God changed his captivity. God is the one that can change the table. He can turn the table. He is merciful. There is a text in the Bible that I love. These signs will follow the ones that believe. Sometimes the person goes to the church before a sign. Sometimes it comes for an interest. He wants a solution. So 
also those moments that God healed, prospered, so the person goes after. And God has teaches not to go after. If you believe, the signs will follow you. So don't follow the signs. This is the difference. The signs will follow the one that believes. We cannot be after the signs. We have to follow Christ. And when we understand and the gratitude for that, when we love the Lord for this, and we are in His presence, not for obligation, but for gratitude, you can be certain that the Psalm 23rd will fulfill in your life. So you not be in want of anything. The Lord also tonight showed in the gifts of the Holy Spirit It shows a family. <laughs> a family that was congregating and suddenly they got sad with something along the way. So the husband gave up to serve the Lord, but the, the wife kept Persevering, serving the Lord, and as for she be faithful to the Lord, every time she comes to the house of the Lord, she presents before God, the Lord gives her a blessing, a portion. And the Lord showed that every time she seeks for the Lord, and that she receives this portion, she takes it home, it shows the situation of the heart of the husband. They will start to turn red. The, the children, when they sing a song for the projection, we see their hearts being red, showing the operation of the Holy Spirit, right? So in this vision, it was seen that the heart started to beat strongly, like coming back to life. So the victory we will arrive. So whoever gives up, that's okay. If the servant is faithful, she's coming for love, for gratitude. Because of that, God is operating among the, the husband. So the Lord, the, the name of God can be glorified. So tonight also the angel was shown in a vision, bringing several flowers with a great essence of flowers and brings joy and happiness to the whole congregation. Jesus is the, the rose of Sharon, the lilac of the valleys. So this good essence, it's very important for our spiritual healing, for our emotional life, it heals us. There is a song that talks about there is an anointment in this place to lift up the, the ones that are weak and to heal the sick. Amen. Let's sing a song.
se colocar de pé, vamos ter uma palavra. The church will be standing and let's have a word of praise. Lord, we praise your name as for tonight. Our soul is rejoicing for all the goods that you have done for us, all the benefits. Blessed be your name. With all our gratitude and praises, we render our gratitude. Blessed be your holy name in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we praise you once again for the privilege to be in your presence, in your house, in your temple, for the benefits of salvation till here. Thank you, Lord. And bless us during this week. They're going to start. Act in favor of your people, your church. Your ears can incline to intersections and to the prayers. Help us with all our needs. Open the doors. Deliver us and provide all our needs who supplicate our blessing and the actions of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And in your name we say that the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, the consolations of the Holy Spirit, be with the people of God now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. We arrive to the end of this service. For the ones that are visiting us, be welcome. And whoever needs a prayer, an assistance, if you want a better understanding of the gifts of the message, we are here to assist you. We remind the church that we are the week in the week of the noon service, whatever you are, in your heart, present your supplications, your family, and all the families of the Lord, and the work abroad. And the Lord will be hearing and attending, responding to our needs. We ask you that you can pray for the for the return from the seminar. The the church, several church, uh, church members went to Massachusetts for the seminar, so they are arriving tonight. Most of them, so they are in return in trips back home. So the Lord give, can give deliverances of ask accidents and violence, and all the problems. Amen. To all peace of the Lord.